Did you ever hear the story about the man who had his feet in the fire and his head on a block of ice? On average, he felt pretty comfortable. This tells us two things. First, it gives us an idea of what passes as humor among statisticians. But second, it also tells us that what we call the average of a set of data doesn't tell us everything we need to know about the experience of each point in that set of data. I'll give you another example. The Chesapeake Bay is a major waterway here on the East Coast. On average, the bay is 21 feet deep, but a full quarter of the bay is less than six feet deep. Now, as a major waterway, this serves two of the East Coast's largest ports. How is it possible for major cargo ships to deliver to these ports when they sink, when they need 30 feet of depth? Again, this average depth or even the median of depth or the mode of the data set isn't telling you everything that you need to know to explain how this can work. So let me give it another example. Take a look at these two data sets. Two thirds of all the data points for each set are going to be one standard deviation away from the central point. As you can see, the blue set is much more tightly clustered. So two thirds of those data points are still going to be very close to the central point. Whereas red, that same, that same standard deviation, that same two thirds is going to be a larger distance away from the central point. Now, let's take a look at another practical application. This one is brought to you by Avi Singh, the founder of LearnPowerBI.com. He's going to create a control chart, which is a great way to measure progress variation over time by taking a look at the variation of the data relative to the standard deviation, which create an upper and lower bound. Let's take a look at what he says. Now, whenever I think of control charts, I think of bowling. Now, I grew up in India playing cricket, so bowling had a totally different meaning there. So here in the bowling lanes, I'm actually not that good. So all I try to do is I try to mark that central line and I try to bowl right down the middle. Now, of course, I do have the gutters on both sides and let's call them the control lines or control limits, shall we? So I have them on both sides and I'm trying to bowl as close to the central line as I can and try to stay within those control lines, the upper and lower control lines. And that really is control chart. Now, if you were to plot out where I end up bowling over time, over the different frames, I am all over the map. So this as a process is not in control. It's not stable, it's very variable. And if you were to look at at a controlled process, a stable process that would be uh, very tightly, all the observations would be tightly around the central line. So that's that would be a process in control. Now, so how do we go about creating these the central line and the control line? Well, the central line is calculated as an average. So we take an average of a prior period and say, hey, that is the, the, the process location and that's the it's kind of the central line for us. And then the upper and lower control lines are determined using sigma or the standard deviation. So the upper control line and lower control line are typically plus minus three sigma, although they don't have to, they can be tighter. Plus minus two sigma or plus minus one sigma would be a much tighter indicating that the process is, is very finely tuned and you can stay within a very narrow range. But typically plus minus three sigma is the default. So let's go into Power BI and check it out. So here we are in Power BI and the process that we are focused on right now is shipment from our warehouses. And the measure that we have selected to build a control chart around is days to ship. Now we could have chosen any different measure. We could have chosen, I don't know, how many defective boxes, like count of defective boxes per 1000 shipment, or uh, we could have chosen uh, how many uh, how many specific orders were shipped late, how many of them were late shipments. It all depends on what your goal is with the process, which aspect of the process you're trying to improve. In this case, it is days to ship. So this is the average days to ship by the month year. Now, and you can see it just varies, this goes up and down as time progresses. Now, we wanna build a control line here based on the prior year's numbers. And for that, I do have a formula defined. And if you look at the formula, it is simply takes the same measure that we are plotting right here, the average to ship and says, yep, give that to me, but give that to me 
for the last full year. And that is accomplished by using the parallel period function. So uh, you can see here, uh, I'm showing uh, kind of the average days to shift for 2016 is this. And the central line, we're just using the average days to shift from the prior year as kind of a, a, a key indicator that, hey, this is what we're aiming for. Uh, so let's plot that on here so that we have our central line. Now for the upper and lower control limit, the first thing we need to calculate is the standard deviation. Now, uh, I already have a standard deviation here and I'm gonna show that to you really quick. So just like we have the average uh, days to ship which goes up and down, we have, uh, let me bring in the standard deviation here. So you can see standard deviation, it goes up and down as time goes on. But we need we need a static value, a straight line based on the full prior year. So the same way we had calculated uh, central line, we're gonna add the standard deviation control line, if it's gonna let me do it. There we go, right? And the formula is almost exactly the same as what we have for the control line. So give me standard deviation, but give it to me for the entire last year. That's what parallel period does. So now that we have the standard deviation, the upper and lower control limits are simple. The upper control limit is going to be actually, uh, so it's going to be uh, the central line plus three sigma, sigma being the standard deviation, and the lower control limit is similarly going to be uh, central line minus three sigma. Oops, I, I messed up, but uh, you, you get the idea. So now let's put this on this graph. This was just a temporary one. So I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna add the upper control limit and the lower control limit. So uh, there you have it. Now uh, in our case, in, in case of AdventureWorks, they are actually operating really well. So you can see that the process is well within the plus minus three sigma. So maybe what we can do is, is set the bar higher. And you can set the bar higher by putting these control lines closer together by making them plus minus one sigma. So instead of three over here, I'm just gonna change that to uh, you know plus minus one sigma. So that is, uh, I change the lower control limit and I'm gonna change the upper control limit. And now I have a much tighter, much higher bar to meet. For more information on this topic, check out our new guide, Leveraging Business Statistics, available on our website.